This video is sponsored by Dibley Create. More about them later in the video. Writing nonfiction books has its share of hangups, heartaches, and hassles, but after writing and publishing over 50 books over the past nine years, I've learned systems to help navigate from ideation to publication with less friction. How you start your nonfiction book can make or break the overall success if you don't have a fundamental understanding of what it takes to not just write a book, but write a nonfiction book worth someone's time and money. Though I'm talking to my nonfiction authors out there, fiction authors can still take a few notes because it will help you build a better understanding of your niche and ideal reading audience. That'll create a more ironclad bond with your readers and that'll have them sharing your books and looking forward to your next publication. To paraphrase Ralph Waldo Emerson, if a man can write a better book, though he build his house in the woods, the world will make a beaten path to his door. But how do you write a better book? Have you ever heard the adage that success leaves a trail of breadcrumbs? It shows if you study successful people in your field, you'll find hints about what it takes to succeed as well. Of course, with a little ingenuity and unique life experiences, you too can write a better book, as Emerson said. Do a little recon before putting pen to paper. Think of this process as less like research and more like observing the world through other people's lenses. While you could write a nonfiction book with only your keen insights, you might lose sight of the bigger picture since you're so close to the subject. Let's explore a few ways to research your next nonfiction book so when you write your next manuscript, it's ready made for a hunger reading audience. Stephen King once said, if you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all others, read a lot and write a lot. Read the books within your niche. For example, I am neck deep in an eight book series set to release in 2024. A large part of my homework before writing the books was to read every book about the topic I cover. No matter how big or small the author is, I'll read it. Having a different perspective helps solidify my views or even provides me with a different outlook to consider. And because my niche covers the self-publishing industry, not all content is evergreen. So I think about how I can better frame the content so I'm not having to update every other month. For me, this meant reading books by Joanna Penn, Honoré Quarter, David Gogren, Craig Martell, and more. Even while I'm editing my manuscripts, I continue reading books about self-publishing so it keeps my insights sharp and my content content relevant. Naturally, Amazon is the ideal place to research published books. To model the successful authors, dive deeper into various marketing aspects that include the title and subtitle choice, the series name, description, and the metadata. The metadata includes everything mentioned before, but also includes the page count, the publishing imprint, and any relevant details about the publication. You'll also notice the Amazon bestseller rank, which is a great indicator for determining what authors to study. I believe all books within a niche are worth studying, but you want to see what books sell the best through the right marketing. An even better indicator of performance is through reviews, the barometer of social proof, if you will. This part of the process can be fun, but also time consuming. I'll show you the longer way first and we'll share a faster way later. Now find a book in your niche, then scour the reviews. I prefer starting at low ratings because every good book gets them. I'm not focused on trolls or ratings with no context. The best reviews are when you get an understanding of the missed opportunities. When you're writing your book, you'll have precisely what readers missed in other publications. You're fulfilling a demand essentially. Once you burn through the low one star reviews, Move your way up one star at a time till you get to five stars. By the time you've gone through hundreds of reviews, you should have a clearer understanding of what the author did right and wrong according to the readers. And yes, ignore the generic, I like book, book is great, I recommend book. Those are useless. Again, you're looking for substance and context, not a summary or commendation with no context. If you go through a dozen books, you'll easily have a laundry list of items to consider when writing your next book. You have the exact solution to what readers want most. Use it to your advantage. Let's look at other areas for online research. After all, if you're planning to publish a nonfiction book, you should strongly consider getting outside sources and citations. Much like reviews, citing your sources serves as third-party credibility. It shows you know what you're talking about and have outside intel from a trusted source. How much is too much? Well, this depends on what you and your editor hash out after the first draft is done. For now, we're still in the building stages, so gather all the sources you can. Start with my favorite resource, 
YouTube. Now, I know not everyone who posts a video on YouTube is qualified to dispense advice, but you'd be surprised at what you can find. Everything from interviews to workshops to live podcasting, you're merely a keyword phrase away from finding a solution to your problem. Search any number of content to suit your needs and you'll do a lot of sifting initially. Much in the same way you did research on books, pay attention to the language. Focus on what they're saying if you're looking to cite the source, but also pay attention to the title of the video, the keywords used in the description, and of course, take a scroll through the comments. Think of them like reviews. Just focus on the comments with substance because you might even get recommendations for other excellent resources. By far, the best way to search down what you need online is Google. If you prefer another search engine, that's fine, but for the sake of this conversation, Google is really the only search engine I use beyond Amazon and YouTube. And as you probably guessed by now, you're going to approach research much in the same way as you did the previous two options. Keywords, titles, reliable sources, and so on. You could even go as far as to taking your list of keywords and comparing their search volume through Google Trends. This tool would give you a more precise idea of what is in demand online and what is on a downward trend. Knowing what people search for makes an enormous difference in discoverability and relatability. You'll have the right keywords for discovery and say the right words that your ideal audience resonates with most. I completely understand that artificial intelligence is a divisive topic, but you'll find that universally, AI can expedite your research process and can be reliable with the right fact-checking systems in place. As you might be aware, the most popular generative AI tool is ChatGPT. ChatGPT is great for sorting out ideas, researching topics, and managing all things related to your book project. Using information sourced through AI comes with one important caveat. You must fact check whatever you research through AI. They built these systems on all informational sources, both accurate and false. I once requested five great quotes about success from ChatGPT and it gave me some pretty good ones. Sadly, I couldn't accept them at face value and had to cross check my information and find a source I could cite. Otherwise, it's best to go without than to go with info that may not be accurate or even altogether true. You can get free access to their GPT 3.5 model with no real time information. Yes. It's pretty nice, but often you're left with doing a lot of prompting and sorting through details while still having to track down your sources. If you want real-time info, you have to shell out 20 bucks per month. Is the upgrade better? I hear it is, but before you go plunking your money down, I have to show you my secret weapon. It's what's given me an unfair advantage in my nonfiction research these days. In fact, if you follow my channel, you'll have noticed I did two book writing challenges, one in a week and another in a day. And I leaned on my sponsors, Dibley Create, for my nonfiction research. Other than reading entire books, Dibley Create can handle all aspects of research in one place. No need to open up three different sites or bookmark dozens of tabs. Get access to the tool and follow along on the next steps when you visit my affiliate link at dalelinks.com slash dibleycreate. Using the pro plan, I get an entire suite of tools that includes Kip's research tab, among many other sweet features, of course. I tap on Kip in the top right corner. Select research, then I choose Amazon search term analysis based on the region specific domain, the search term, and the number of books I want to analyze. If I want more granular results, I hit the drop down for advanced search, then put in additional prompts or insights. I use advanced search for precision research to filter through only relevant information. Usually it takes a few minutes for Kip to gather the analysis. In the meantime, I typically keep going about my work till it gives me a notification at the bottom of the dashboard. Once it's set, I check out the output and save it to a note. This is key to organization since it'll put it with your book so you have something to easily reference while you're writing later. You'll find out everything from popular titles associated with the keyword, all the relevant metadata, the rating, and the number of reviews, the Amazon bestseller rank, also known as the ABSR, the cost, and quite a few other items. Scroll past that and you'll get the in-depth analysis about what readers thought about the book, including the strengths and weaknesses. Books with 100 reviews are greater and they bring back a more balanced view. Oh, and get this, Kip loads you up with keywords including short and long tail keywords. These words are what you normally have to spend hours combing the internet for, making sense of a veritable alphabet soup online. The best part I like is the competitive edge. Kip literally tells me how to knock the ball out of the park. Fulfill these needs and you'll win big time. 
This isn't merely AI guessing its way through things. It's AI presenting factual information on what customers expect from books in your niche. But what if you really want to refine your research to a precise author and book? Well, grab the ISBN 10 code or ASIN in the product details section of the book on Amazon. Again, you could ask specific questions or requests in the advanced search, just like the search term analysis tool. Again, the keywords and competitive edge sections are what I appreciate most. When I was writing a book about how to write a book in 24 hours, I searched up other books similar to what I was producing. I got all the inside intel I needed to confidently pump out the outline for my book and write an excellent first draft with all the right sources readily available available. As you can imagine, the YouTube and Google search term analysis tools work the same way. Now you're getting the actual websites and URLs so you can easily fact check your info. Again, you can't really get that with free chat GPT. Research is your best friend when it comes to crafting that masterpiece. Whether you're an old school book hunter or writing the AI wave, take your time, double check those sources and watch the magic happen. Stay tuned to this channel for the next best steps to write and publish killer books in this eight part video series. Get access to Dibley Creates Research Tool among five other options for outlining, description writing, summarizing, and more. And that's just scratching the surface of what Dibley Create can do for nonfiction authors. Check out this next video where I show you how I wrote an entire book in seven days using only my iPhone 7 in Dibley Create. I'll see you there.